It is a common process in Java to repeat a process, and the mechanism to repeat a process in Java is a loop. And today, in this video, what I want to specifically look at are do while loops. And dual while loops are very similar to while loops, but we're going to look at the syntax and see the slight difference between the two. First of all, a do while loop has the word do at the top. And you'll see that the while is still there, but it's at the bottom of the loop as opposed to the beginning of the loop. You'll also notice that there's a semicolon after the while statement. That's because in a do while loop, the condition is checked at the end of the loop. So this represents the end of the loop as opposed to the beginning of the loop up here. The first part of a do while loop is going to be where the loop is going to start. And so our loop is going to start at one. So I said int i equals one. Next, we need a condition of where it's going to end and everywhere in between. So that's going to be i is less than or equal to 5. And then finally, I'm going to need an increment. What is it going to count up by as the loop iterates through itself? And so we're going to count up by 1. And so the increment would be i++. Also, we want the loop to do something. And what we're going to have the loop do is simply print out the value of i as it loops. In order to show how this loop is going to work, I've created a t-chart here with i and output. So each level is going to show what's going to happen at this iteration of the loop. And down here, I have the output. And this is going to indicate what's going to happen in totality as the loop runs. Up here is going to be one iteration or one trip through the loop. Down here is going to be in totality, what is it printing out? And we call this not just a do while loop, but a count control do while loop because it's being controlled by the number of times it runs, or it's going to count the number of times it's runs, starting at one, going to five. And so as we start our loop, i would equal one, we would get to the do statement. All the do statement does is it tells the computer to go on into the loop. So we do exactly that, and we print out the value of i. The value of i is one. So we print 1. So the first iteration, i was 1, the output was 1, and we see that it printed out 1. i++, plus plus, i would then be 2, as indicated in the t-chart, and then we check the condition, while i is less than or equal to 5. Well, 2 is less than 5, so we continue on. do just means continue on. We print out i, which is 2. i++, plus plus, i is 3. Check the condition, yes, that's true. do again, print it out i is 3, i plus plus, i becomes 4, check the condition, 4 is less than 5, go up to the do statement again, print out 4, i plus plus, i becomes 5, check the condition, 5 is less than or equal to 5, so we would run it one more time, do, we get to the print statement, it prints out 5, i would become 6, the condition is no longer true for the while loop to run, Therefore, it would stop there, and our output in totality would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what if we wanted to change up what the loop was doing? That loop was starting at 1, counting to 5, and incrementing by 1. What if we wanted to start at 5, count down to 1, and decrement by 1, or count down by 1? So instead of saying int i equals 1, we're going to say int i equals 5. Instead of saying i is less than or equal to 5, we're saying i is greater than or equal to 1, so it counts down to 1. And instead of saying i++, plus plus, which would add 1 to i each time, we're going to say i minus minus, which is going to count down by 1. So we see as we run this loop, i starts at 5, goes to the do statement, and so it'll automatically enter it. It's going to print i, which is 5. i minus minus would change i to 4 checks the condition, that is true, 4 is greater than or equal to 1, goes to the do, prints out 4, i becomes 3, the while statement is true, 3 is greater than 1, it goes to the do statement, which then prints out i, i is 3, i minus 1 is 2, checks the condition, that's true, goes to the do statement, prints out i, i is now 2, i minus minus, i becomes 1, i is greater than or equal to 1, goes to the do statement, prints out 1, decrements i by 1, i becomes 0, the condition is no longer true, and therefore the loop is finished. So this time we have accomplished our goal. We started at 5, and we're counting down to 1. 
and we're decrementing by one each time. So the output would be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Next, what if we wanted to start at 5 and count up to 25, but instead of counting by 1s, we wanted to count by 5s? Let's see how we would change the loop. Well, first, int i would still equal 5 because we're starting at 5. But instead of i being greater than or equal to 1, i would be less than or equal to 25. And instead of i minus minus, because we're not counting down anymore, we'd say i plus equals 5. Or we could say i equals i plus 5. So then we start our loop. i is equal to 5. We put the 5 in our t-chart. Go to the do statement. It automatically runs it. System out print i, so the first output would be 5. i plus equals 5 would be 10. The while statement would be true. 10 is less than 25. Go to the do, print out 10. i plus 5 is 15. The while statement is true. Go to the do, print out i. i is 15, so it prints out 15. i plus equals 5, so now i is 20. Checks the condition, that's still true. Go to the do, print out 20 i plus equals 5, so now i is 25. 25 is less than or equal to 25, so we continue on in the loop. So 25 would print out. i plus equals 5, so now i is 30. That's our exit condition, so i is no longer less than or equal to 25, and therefore our loop would end. And our output would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. We have met the condition that we started out to do. Finally, what if we didn't want to print out i? What if we just wanted to print out i like pi five times? And we didn't want to have to worry about what i was inside of the loop. Well, that's what this example is going to show us. We start at one and we're going to count to five just like we did in the first example. And the only thing that's different, instead of printing out i, we're printing out i like pi. So we start i as one, put it into our t-chart, go to the do statement, go to the system out print line statement, which prints out i like pi, i plus plus, i is now two, go to the while statement, which is true, go back to the do statement, go to the system out print line, which prints i like pi again, i becomes three, the condition is still true, go to the do, print out i like pi again, i is four, i is less than or equal to five is true, go to the do statement, print out i like pi, i plus plus, 5 is less than or equal to 5, so we run this one last time, go to the do, automatically enters in, we get i like pi one last time, i plus plus, i becomes 6, this is going to be the exit condition, the condition is false, and therefore we have printed out below i like pi five times. So what do we notice about the count control do while loop? First of all, it uses the keyword do. Do just means continue on. It doesn't check for anything. It just allows you to enter the loop. You'll notice that the do while loop allows you to enter the loop at least one time. As opposed to the while loop, the do while loop is checked at the end of the loop. And so you see it will run at least once and then check the condition. That is the significant difference between the while and do while loop. The semicolon is at the end of the loop. And it's there because, unlike the if statement, the while loop, or the for loop, the loop has ended down at the bottom with a do while as opposed to just starting with a for or a while loop. And there are three parts to a count control do while loop. Initialization, where it's going to start, the conditional, and that's also going to indicate where it's going to end, and how is it going to increment. In this video, we have looked at a count controlled do while loop, and in an upcoming video, we'll look at an event controlled where a counter is not controlling the loop, but rather an event is. Loops are an integral part of Java, as oftentimes in programming, we want to repeat a process, and the do while loop meets this need for us. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.